What's up, mobile devs? I hope you're doing well. It's amazing to be here at the AppJS. Thank you so much, Expo and Software Mention, for having me. I'm super grateful to be here. So this will be a talk about React Native Animations. This will be my first talk, by the way, so I'm super, super excited about it. Uh, but before diving very deep into the concept, into the subject, just a super quick introduction about myself. I'm Enzo. I'm a um, software, software engineer. I do work as a React Native consultant, and I absolutely love creating animations uh, and interactions with React Native. I really love animations in general. I start all of my days with a Totoro mug filled with a ton of coffee, and this really helps a lot, by the way. But more than watching Ghibli movies and creating animations and interactions, I really love sharing the process behind building them. And because of that, four years ago, I created a YouTube channel called Reactive with a couple of eyes. It was a typo, but I really liked how it, uh, how it sounds, so I stick with it. And on this channel, I do create some tutorials on how you can create React Native animations from scratch. A couple of, a couple of, a couple of years ago, I um, started sharing also some demos on X, Twitter. Uh, to be honest here, I'm just trying to replicate the work made by some very, very talented designers, and I'm trying to use React Native, of course. So this talk is going to be about uh, sharing some tips that I learned along the way while trying to build uh, animations. Nothing too magical, nothing too fancy, just some tips that really helped me a lot along the way. And to do that, I'd like to go a few months back. It was December 2024. I was preparing my New Year resolutions. And uh, during this time, I got some more free time. It was Christmas, and I rewatched Ratatouille amazing Pixar movie. It talks about the story of Remy, who is a mouse that dreams about becoming a great chef. And there is a scene in Ratatouille where Chef Cousteau is telling to everyone through the television that anyone can cook. And this scene really touched my heart somehow because, you know, I'm Italian, as you can easily spot from my accent. Uh, and in Italy, we have a strong culture around food. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm so bad at cooking. So I decided that for my New Year resolutions 2025, no matter what, I want to become great at cooking food. So the good news is that my girlfriend is amazing at cooking. She's super talented, but she didn't really provide any tutorial from scratch. So I had to learn again by observing and replicating what she was doing. And so far, I mainly learned a couple of things, made some very small subjective improvements. But overall, I'm really confident that these things are really going to be helpful in the long run. And the first thing that I learned is that you have to pick the best ingredients which means that handmade pasta is going to be better than pre-made pasta whatsoever. And the second thing that I learned is that details are everything. Even a leaf of basil on your pasta and pesto will make a huge difference. So of course, that's not a cooking masterclass, maybe next time. But the point that I want to raise is that uh, cooking great meals isn't so different than cooking great animations. And of course, I'm not Chef Gusto, but I strongly believe and I can safely tell you that everybody can cook with React Native. But again, you have to pick the best ingredients, which of course means that you have to go with Reanimated. We are at the AppJS. I don't think that I have to convince you about that. According to the state of React Native 2024, 96% of React Native devs are aware of Reanimated. 87% of them are using it. So I still don't like to take things for granted. So if you're not familiar with the Reanimated, I mean, it's a package created by a team at Software Mansion. I am super grateful. Um, otherwise, this talk would have been only about pasta. And it is the way to go, because it's so performant. Everything is animated on the UI thread. And it is also very, very easy to use. So practically speaking, we can have a look at this uh, uh, very simple animation. This is a circle animating on the x-axis. And we can build this animation with Reanimated. By just using three different tools, we need a shared value. We need to animate the shared value with a timing or with a spring animation. And we can pass the shared value by an animated style to an animated view. And that's really it. I mean, the implementation is very simple. Uh, and it feels like the implementation is simple because the animation itself is very easy. But the truth is that you can really go very far with these concepts because animating always means updating a value within a range. But again, details are everything, especially when talking about animations. And so far, we are not really taking time um, talking about them. So we need to take time to uh, define the proper configuration. And here, of course, we have timing animations, spring animations. Let's, try, let's start from the timing animations, because these are just easier. And all the timing animations are going to be based on a duration and an easing. And what I was doing until a few months ago 
was that I was just seeing these two parameters. I was faking myself as a designer or as a design engineer, if you want to. And I was uh, customizing my fancy custom Bezier curve, but everything was always based on my own personal taste. But there, there is something that I learned recently that really changed how I was looking at the animation, which is that uh, even if you want to place a leaf of basil on your pasta and pesto, you can't just throw it away. There are some rules that you need to follow. So there must be rules even to choose the proper easing. You can't just improvise. You need to follow some rules. So to fully understand these rules, uh, let's just have a super quick overview over the four fundamental easings. We have the linear one, which has constant speed, no acceleration or deceleration. We have the ease in, which will start slow, then speeds up. We have the ease out, which will start fast and then slows down. And of course, we have the ease in and out, which is a combination of the ease in and ease out. It will start slow, accelerates, and finally decelerates. And here we can try to use our personal taste, hopefully for the last time. And we can try to take the uh, previous animation and basically try to play with all the different easings to see which one looks better. So the linear one feels a bit robotic, a bit mechanical, I have to say. It doesn't really look natural. The ease in feels like we are jumping straight in front of a wall. Doesn't feel natural as well. We have the ease out, which looks definitely better than the previous ones. But there is still something missing. And the ease in out just looks perfect because it will start slow, accelerates, and finally decelerates. And that's exactly how I expect an object to be moving. But that's not a coincidence. The whole point is that the ease in and out easings are pretty well suited when the element is already mounted on the UI and there is a state transition or a change in position. The other easings are still super relevant, but when used on um, different use cases, so for instance, the ease out uh, are fantastic when you want to mount a component on the UI because they are going to start fast. You want that the user gets this quick feedback uh, and uh, basically they are just going to get the attention right away because they are going to start very fast. The, about the ease in, they usually feel sluggish. Just avoid using them, uh, use them unless you really know what you're doing. You can see the difference uh, by using the ease in at the left and the ease out at the right. And then the linear animations, as we saw previously, they usually feel robotic and mechanical. But there is a very specific case where you want to go with linear animations, uh, which is the case of perpetual motion. So spinners or perpetual carousel, it makes sense because otherwise you are going to get this flat tire behavior, which doesn't really look nice. So before choosing the easing, uh, instead of relying on our personal taste, uh, we need to try to answer to these questions. Are we animating a perpetual motion? If that's the case, very specific case of something perpetual, let's go with the linear animation. If that's not the case, is the UI element already mounted on the UI? If it is there um, and we want to animate the position, we want to animate the state, let's go with the ease in and out. Otherwise, if it's not there, a toast model menu and we want to mount it, let's go with the ease out. And that's not something, I mean, to be very honest, that's not something that I learned while cooking. This is something that I learned by these three amazing articles, Great Animations by Emil Kowalski, The Basics of Easing by Paul Lewis, and The Handbook to Animation Easings by Drew Powers. These are just amazing. And when you understand these concepts, it feels like you have unlocked the secret behind animations. But the truth is that everything falls apart when we have a look at this one. And here at the top, we have a timing animation. And uh, at the bottom, we have a spring animation. And the second one just feel more natural. And you know, I'd like to recall a quote from a friend of mine who was always repeating and repeating that if you really want to surprise someone, you have to deliver a sense of deja vu. And that's exactly what spring animations are all about. They are going to be based on a mess, on a stiffness, and on a damping. They are going to be based on physics. They are going to feel more natural by definition. And of course, at this point, we can try to ask to ourselves the classical question, do we need to go with spring animations or with timing animations? And I strongly believe that when we want to animate the motion, we need to go with, timing, uh, with the spring animation, sorry. And you know, the difference is going to be very subtle sometimes, but there is a, a use case that really highlights that very well, which is the drag and drop pattern. And here uh, we have this uh, very simple animation. We have a magnet. We can move around the magnet with the finger. And you see that these, I mean, I'm using timing animations here, and there is something wrong. I mean, a couple of things are completely wrong. The first one is that the duration won't depend on the distance. The duration is going to be fixed. 
And the second issue is that uh, we are not taking into account the velocity of the finger. So spring animations are going to fill this issue completely. You can see the difference. Uh, because of course, uh, the duration won't depend on the distance. The duration will be based on the mass, stiffness, and duration. And of course, uh, we can also very easily take into account the velocity on the x-axis uh, and on the y-axis. So, I mean, we don't have to throw away what we have just learned previously. We can still try to use the motion rules, but we can just try to adjust them. So instead of using the is out and is in and out, we can use some spring approximation. And the concept of spring approximation feels a bit abstract, but it's so easy to visualize. So for instance, the second one here is a spring approximation of the top one. And here, the second one is a spring approximation of the is out. This is amazing, to be honest. Um, you don't have to be so rigorous while trying to approximate, but I, I really like to do that, and so I created a, a small website uh, uh, that you can find at motion.reactive.io. Uh, it is open source. It has been created with the uh, Expo. Uh, it works on web, iOS, Android, and uh, it is powered by Reanimated and Skia. But again, we are talking about motion. I'm not saying that we need to erase the timing animations. Timing animations are still super rele relevant, especially if you want to animate the opacity or the background color. You are still going to need timing animations, of course, because uh, especially with the, the background color, you want to animate the colors evenly, so it makes a lot of sense to use the easing linear. But this is just too much theory. Isn't there a quick secret ingredient I can use right away to improve my recipes? And this is a question that I raised a million of times in the past months. And I found out that uh, the secret ingredient is mayonnaise. You can just use mayonnaise, and it will add this touch of flavor right away. It will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. That's not opinionated, but I really like the fact that you enjoy mayonnaise as well. And I also believe that layout animations are the mayonnaise of React Native. You can really add layout animations right away. It's going to be super quick, and you are really going to get a lot of value by adding layout animations. So to add layout, animation, layout animations, you can start by a view. You can, you can convert the view to an animated view by using animated from reanimated, of course. And then you can just apply the layout property by using linear transitions. And this will just work. This is amazing. But of course, we want to care about details. So let's uh, just add the springify. Let's, add to, uh, let's try to add the mass, the stiffness, and the damping. And that's really it. So you can see, uh, I mean, at the right, that we have a pretty huge difference. You can see also the best cuisine. I mean, Polish cuisine is amazing as well, I have to say. Um, and you can also play with entering and exiting animations when talking about, uh, um, I mean, layout animations. And these are really just three lines of code, and you're really going to get a crazy amount of value. But at the very beginning, I was talking about multiple ingredients. And I really feel that we are missing somehow the salt that will make our dishes taste better. We are really missing React Native Skia. So React Native Skia is a, a package created to bring the Skia graphic library to React Native. It is sponsored by Shopify and created by William Candio and Christian Folk, two wizards, really. William is also in the audience. That's just amazing. And you know, there is a lot of traction behind Skia. 90% of React Native devs are interested in it according to the state of React Native 2024. But there is quite a huge gap between the usage and the interest. And in my opinion, this is caused by the fact that it's still not so obvious why do we need React Native Skia. This is a question that I got asked a lot of times. And this was honestly something that uh, I really didn't understand right away. And the way I understood why do we need React Native Skia was by observing uh, this diagram. This is not really a diagram, just a circle with the React Native logo in it. But you can really try to envision in this circle the world React Native ecosystem. So you can see the React Native core, reanimated, React Native gesture handler, all the expo packages, React Native screens, React Navigation, and so on, really whatever. And near to it, you can see Skia. And we can identify three different areas, what can be done with React Native, what can be done by using both React Native and React Native Skia, and what can be done by using only React Native Skia. And of course, the third area is the value that Skia is bringing to the React Native community. So to fully understand this value, it's worth to explore the limitations of React Native, try to see what can be done by using React Native without using Skia until we reach a limitation. 
And a pretty, you, I mean, a pretty interesting use case are gradients. You can, of course, build gradients with React Native. You can use Expo Linear Gradient, React Native Linear Gradient, React Native SVG. But what about animated gradients? At some point, you are really going to need to use Kia, I believe. Uh, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. What about animated blurs on Android? What about uh, shadows? Probably shadows are, have been sold by the new architecture, but what about animated shaders? You have to go with Skia at this point. And we are really starting to reveal the value behind Skia. And there is so much more than that. Mask and clips, shaders, shadows, blur mask, path effects, GUI effect, headless Skia, a lot. This is amazing, but can also feel a bit overwhelming. And uh, luckily, there is a tutorial section in the SCIA documentation, super recommended. You are going to find some tutorials created by Da Heyun, Daniel, and William, of course. Really a ton of value right there, um, highly recommended. And once you're, once you're going to be comfortable with these KPIs, you are really going to see SCIA everywhere. This feels like an empty slide, but the truth is that if you really look closely on the edges, you can see some gray dots. And I mean, there is somehow a spiral behind the radial gradient, so let's just remove. And the whole presentation background was uh, uh, created by using uh, um, headless skia, and it made so much sense for me to use a skia for this specific case, because I'm obsessed with spiral, I wanted to create spiral, and created, uh, creating this image with a high resolution can be very, very hard with, um, with Figma. And I also had the chance to create a million of different spirals, had so much fun, uh, before choosing the one that I really like the most. Uh, and this is also a video created by combining Skia with Dreammotion. This is just amazing, in my opinion, and feels magical. And at this point, it's safe to say that somehow Skia brings the magic to React Native. So you might be in the audience thinking, well, I don't really care about an animated spiral. I'm not going to need an animated gradient. I'm not going to need an animated blur on Android. My app doesn't need all this magic. So you might think that you still don't need to use Skia. But the whole point that I'm, I want to raise is that Skia doesn't just bring the magic to React Native. It does way more than that. And a great example is the React Native Fast Confetti package created by Alirad Zajar, which, by the way, is also in the audience. So unbelievable that at the AppJS I can just mention people, and they are going to be in the audience, really. And this is an amazing package um, built on top of Skia. And you might think that, uh, I mean, confettis are pretty simple components. We can build confettis by using animated views and by trying to apply a transformation on top of it. So potentially, we can also build um, a confetti animation without using Skia. But the whole issue is that we are going to render a ton of uh, React Native reanimated views all at once. We are going to block completely our JS thread, and we really don't want to do that. So the great, great advantage is that Skia completely solves this problem because we are not going to render, we are going to draw paths over a Skia Canva, and drawing is going to be way faster than rendering. And in addition to that, uh, um, I mean, there is also the Atlas API, which will make things even faster. And I'm not saying that you need to mount the Canva everywhere. You need to find, of course, the right balance because mounting the Canva can be expensive uh, from a memory standpoint. So you want to find the right balance between mounting uh, a Canva drawing paths versus rendering components. But just keep in mind that this can happen a lot of times. Uh, I mean, all of these uh, examples, for instance, potentially can be built with the regular React Native, but they are just not going to work without using the Atlas API. Or now, I mean, I saw yesterday the talk from Christoph, amazing, about web GPU, type GPU. This is going to be the future. And you can, uh, I mean, just keep in mind that uh, it is worth to considering this kind of technology if you want to render a ton of components on uh, your UIs. And that's really it. I mean, today I tried to share on this talk uh, so far all the, I mean, all the tips, the most important tips that I collected over the past years. But if I had to wrap it up over one sentence, I would just say that great animations are built on delightful surprises. And here I'd like to recall a quote from a friend of mine who was always repeating and repeating that if you really want to surprise someone, you have to deliver a sense of déjà vu. Thank you so much. It has been amazing to be at the App Jazz. Super grateful to be here.